Hi, Angela. Hello. Uh, so because the, just the two of us here, it looks like uh, Robert, who was the other person interested in Oscar, he had a scheduled conflict. So I think he is not able to attend. Um, so I'm not sure whether Jim is coming. Um, let me see here. Hmm. So we may have to move this discussion to. I'm sure the fortress team will not wait for another two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Uh, let's see here. Is someone recording this? It looks like it automatically records it. Uh huh. So, okay. So, let's let's give a few minutes. If uh, nobody else is joining, then we may have to come back in two weeks and present. Um, I think that's what we need to do. I'll I'll put uh, I'm adding some notes into the document. Okay. That we both joined and. Uh, let me let me add that you you can see what I'm adding. Uh, do you think it makes sense just to present? Because since this is recorded, I think people can watch that and use maybe next week to get more feedback or maybe you can get feedback from, is there any, what are the means of communication with the, with the team? Is via mail threads or? It's mainly with the, in, the, in this call and in that uh, meeting notes. In the meeting notes, okay. Yeah, why don't you do that? Uh, that's a great idea. So let's go ahead and uh, have you present it. Uh, that way it's recorded and uh, people can review it. Yeah, and then we can ask, you know, what what is the feedback? I, I hope the PR would be maybe, um, so the sample would be available for everybody. Um, let me, I need to share. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, so um, I have here uh, two um, uh, JSON structures, uh, left and right. Uh, they are both uh, related to the result from the uh, compliance operator via the open scap. And those um, originated XCCDF uh, results are structured here around the uh, OSCAL assessment result uh, subset of um, of uh, uh, objects, and I will explain. I will explain which ones. So I think Jaya, you presented OSCAL in the prior sessions, so the team uh, members are aware of the OSCAL as a compliance framework, as well as a uh, uh, the. Uh, schema the data models for that framework and as well as the documentation uh, uh, standardization so here we are leveraging the oscal schemas the data models and in particular the assessment result uh, schema um, the the framework is complex as well as the uh, schemas that are associated with that at the various level of the flows in the uh, uh, of the data flowing through the framework um, the 
uh, which brings right uh, into, into the schema's dependencies on the different you know, prior steps. But if we are looking only at the subset of um, observations and findings, we are able to um, extract a set of um, objects that can be uh, leveraged to describe the results in a way that we do not need all the other uh, dependent uh, artifacts um, on the prior steps in, in OSCAL. So um, we, I present here left and right uh, those compliance uh, operator results in this um, uh, JSON format based on the OSCAL findings. The difference between them is whether the, um, the assessment tool, in this case, the compliance operator, is regulation aware or not. So if we are looking strictly at the XCCDF uh, result, right, at the uh, open scap uh, results, there is no mention of, of um, regulation or the controls within a regulation. What you'll see are the um, CIS benchmark banks rules um, with the timestamps and, and the results. And this is what we have on the left. Um, we have uh, a bunch of properties that, that uh, we can find in, in that file, right? What is the run of the test, um, right? What are the, um, some uh, remarks that are in there? So all the, all the I would say, uh, <clears throat> items that are not strictly related to the result and to the rules are mapped here under the uh, properties, the observation properties. And uh, part of that, we get also the uh, rules that are associated. And I'm looking here at two particular rules, right? So I'm looking at item nine and item 10, and they um, uh, describe the rule that, uh, particularly the ID of the rule. XCCDF, uh, one is finger service and the other one exact timeout, request exam timeout. So these are, these are the, the rules. Let's say that I have a, you know, an XCCDF as config map, and these are the rules that I find in that. Uh, <clears throat> let me close the properties. I have here all the details and that, and now we are looking at the uh, evidence. So I have two rules. So I expect to have at least two uh, um, evidence items in here. Um, in the case of compliance operator, I have a, a, a result per, uh, worker node. So if I have two rules and three worker nodes, I'll have six uh, evidence items here. Here we have just, you know, for the sake of this example, two rules on one worker node, um, and I'll have those two rules. So I have the uh, properties in the one being, okay, what is my rule? What is the <clears throat> timestamp? And what is the, the uh, status? Uh, it is a pass. And in the, the other one, we will find the um, um, rule, <coughs> the timestamp, uh, and uh, fail. That, that second one failed. Um, and the second one comes with uh, uh, additional uh, properties, and they are, they are described in here. Um, so we are talking about the scope. In this case, it was a uh, cluster with one worker node. So subject references. Um, is the object under which I put the subjects of my assessment and the, the, the references to that, those subjects. So in the case of VMs would be the, um, you know, IPs associated with that and so on. In this case, I'll have the, um, um, the uh, details associated with that, uh, with that uh, worker node that we could find in that, um, uh, result from the com compliance uh, operator. And there is one last item, observation methods, where I can describe details. In this case, it's an automated, uh, automated test. The reason why I find this relevant is that uh, if we have certain uh, tests that are uh, done um, uh, manual, and, and this is the case, for instance, in, in the uh, CIS benchmarks that are not implemented, they do not have a script within the um, OpenSCAP uh, logic, right? They will be marked as info or not checked. Um, and the, the, the meaning behind that, this is a 
uh, check that is done is done manually. So we can capture that aspect as well here, uh, knowing that the result will be passed in a, in a manual way. So, so this is mapping uh, what we have in terms of the XCCDF uh, from the um, compliance operator uh, on top of the uh, OSCAL uh, assessment result observation object. Now, if we are looking at the um, uh, code that is available, at the data that is available for the compliance operator, uh, particularly the uh, compliance as a code uh, project, we find uh, as part of the data available, the mapping of the rules of the CS benchmarks to various um, regulations. So um, in particular, the open scap for um, uh, OCP, uh, or for Linux, right? They are both covered by um, by a compliance operator. Uh, we see the definitions of the profiles, and uh, uh, the um, SIG has a profile for NIST, a profile for CIS, profile for HIPAA, and you know other other regulations. And we find as part of the documentation in compliance as a code that mapping between the CIS benchmarks for RHEL 7 and the uh, NIST uh, 853 controls um, that are relevant for that. Uh, in the case of the uh, OCP, uh, we are looking at OCP 4. Um, the, so this is OpenShift Cloud Platform uh, version 4. We have only two that are mapped, but through um, uh, other artifacts that are available in the compliance as a code, we are able to infer that mapping as well. So now, depending on where the logic of associating those results on the left, right, just the observations, with the uh, correspondent regulation that is of interest to the consumer, right, the consumer may be uh, looking at NIST level or CIS level or HIPAA level. The um, result that we send back to um, to the tool that uh, is providing the uh, display of the, uh, or creating the document for that regulation, uh, may contain also the association with the controls. And, and OpenSCAP, and uh, sorry, OSCAL allows that mapping as well. So um, I present here on the right um, an addition to what we have on the left in order to include the regulation. So the left one is regulation agnostic, the right one is regulation aware. And you see here under observations, right? I'm marking here, right? This, what we have here are, are basically the um, uh, details that I have on the left, right? So we have the properties, the evidence group, the observation methods and so on for, for multiple items. And what I have above is the delta that I'll, I'll show how OSCAL handles in order to, um, to provide the mapping to the controls. So uh, we are talking now about results group and findings. A finding includes multiple uh, observation, but the finding uh, maps one-to-one -to, -one to a control in the regulation of interest. So here I'm looking at NIST 853. So one finding, right, I'm looking at item zero. I have, we have two items in here, item zero and item one. So item zero is interested in the, um, control AC3. So the objective and objective status uh, ob, um, object in here contains the control AC, AC3 um, and the result um, with the value fail. Um, this is the aggregated result across all the uh, constituent rules that are associated with that AC3. Those can be rules in OCP um, uh, for I see, I see the, uh, um, CIS benchmarks uh, for Kubernetes. Those can be in RHEL 7. These are the uh, Linux uh, benchmarks, right, that are associated with AC3. So all those will be, uh, will contain observations with their individual status. And what we have here in the objective status is at the regulation level, AC3, the NIST control, with the aggregated status across that. Um, uh, in the properties here, we defined all the rules that are associated with uh, AC3. 
and uh, we have rules that come from the uh, Kubernetes CAs, benchmarks on Kubernetes, as well as uh, rules that come from the um, RHEL 7, the Linux. Um, so we, we, we have here all the rules, and now we expect that the observations will provide at least one observation for each rule. If, if one of those rules is, is missing, the status that we have here, it would be error or missing or... So now that we know what are the rules that are associated with uh, AC3, so, and because here we are in the context of the compliance operator, we are looking at CIS benchmarks, but if we are looking for other contexts, right, we may have other um, rules in there. Um, <clears throat> Well, we are looking at the observations and I say, okay, the first observation is for the rule, you know, limit user access. And as we've seen before, I will have here the properties associated with that. We'll have the evidence uh, where I present the, uh, uh, what, is the, what is the rule and what is the status. So in this particular case, um, this is not checked. Let's see what, what, what was the um, target the, the subject, the resource on which that was, uh, it, is, uh, it is a VM, okay? And the details of the VM will be provided here, okay? I'm talking about um, that worker node in that cluster in, in that region. So whatever it is provided by uh, the compliance operator uh, result, right, will be, will be here. So we'll have uh, the details of the, um, uh, target resource. In this case, it was this uh, worker node. We will have the evidence that will tell the rule associated with the uh, with the with the status, and in the uh, uh, properties above, we'll have additional details related to uh, uh, to that, like the uh, result or the, the timestamp associated with that. So this is this is one item. We can look at another one. Uh, and this comes from a, a, another uh, another uh, VM. In this case, we had um, a cluster with three worker nodes. So we will have the results um, uh, in the observation, right? Three observation, one status for each of the each rule for each uh, VM. And if we are look at the others, we will see also results from the um, the Kubernetes CIS benchmarks because in the dependencies for this AC3, for this NIST controls, I have both CIS Kuber um, Kubernetes rules as well as uh, Linux um, CIS benchmarks. So the um, subject reference here, I think would be a, a worker node. And those will be the details of the worker node in here, the location, the, the cluster associated with that and so on. And if we are looking at the, um, um, evidence, okay, what would be the evidence, right? You'll see the rule that is associated with that and the uh, result, right, the failure. So the, the, the logic um, here, actually we have this uh, implemented and the logic that we use that if we have any failure, it's a failure. If we have um, any um, error, it's an error. If we have any warning, we are looking also at uh, um, uh, trends, right, for, for some of the rules. So uh, if we have a warning, right, I get close to a limit of a value of a parameter. I have a warning, um, um, else if everything passes, I have a pass. Um, so let me close the observations here and go back for a second to the um, objective. So in this control, AC3, we um, OSCAL provides also um, uh, an object which is implementation status that allows me uh, or allows the, the uh, user of the system to tell whether this uh, um, control is implemented completely or partially, right? So uh, this means that the interpretation of NIST AC3 uh, from the point of view of the uh, rules, the CS benchmarks that I that that are associated with that in the in the properties completely cover right AC3 uh, control. So then I'll have a complete and a complete and a, and a, a pass right will give me a, a, a pass for this control. However, if this control is partially implemented, meaning that the 
the benchmarks that are associated with that do not fully cover all the items that the control uh, requires. I will have here the implementation status as being partial. And then the, um, uh, the result, in log instead of being a pass, if everything passes, it will be a partial pass because it's not completely implemented. Um, and uh, one last um, item here. Um, we, we discussed that under the observations, right, in, in the uh, observation, we also give this observation method, whether it's uh, automated or not. If we are dealing with a mix of automated um, tests, assessments, as well as manual assessments, um, until we have the manual uh, items as well in the system, that will also be a partial pass. So if I have uh, um, all the results from my automated tests, right, everything that I get from the uh, open scap that is, uh, has a script, right, to, to check a rule, um, if everything passes, but I do not have the results for the uh, CIS benchmark that are manual, it will be also a partial pass. So all this, all this um, um, let's say, levels of granularity and levels of uh, detail to inform the user on the actual posture of a, of a control are supported in this rich uh, schema uh, uh, that comes from, from OSCAL. So now, uh, depending on the level of uh, leverage, right, in, in this uh, uh, project, in this working group, right, we can, we can select a subset of that or, you know, go with, go with, with the full-blown um, a set of set of items. So I know it's a mouthful, and we have many items covered. But I would say in in a uh, summary here that um, what we um, uh, and by the way, as a uh, um, pull request uh, that I um, created for the um, sample right that I submitted. Um, is for the complete one here on the on the right. If we need, I can submit it also the, the simpler one. But since this one includes the observation of the other one, I submitted only this one. So in, in, in conclusion, right, we are able to um, map the uh, current, uh, you know, uh, XCCDF result part. XCCDF is very rich, right? So it has items related to remediation. It has items related to uh, violations and so on. This wasn't the scope of this exercise. So in this exercise, we only focused on the uh, results um, uh, that are presented in XCCDF. By the way, OSCAL also supports the, uh, the um, um, description of the uh, remediations and, and, and threats and risks and so on in other aspects, other objects associated with the assessment results. Again, they are not subject of this uh, um, uh, presentation and the um, uh, modeling that we have done between XCCDF and and uh, OSCAL JSON here. But if we are interested, right, I can bring uh, samples related to that as well. So we only looked at the uh, results. We've seen that the OSCAL observations object uh, can encapsulate the aspects related to uh, scope, right? What is my target uh, uh, subject? Uh, that I've done the assessment on, uh, covers the evidence. Uh, uh, it um, covers the uh, observation method and properties that uh, can be associated with that. Beyond this, we've seen also that we can go a level above and associate this with a regulation uh, and be able to describe how these individual observations contribute to an aggregated result for a control in a regulation. And in our example, it was NIST 853. Um, so um, I'll stop here. Uh, 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 Jaya, uh, let me know if there are any things that you've seen this presentation before, if I missed anything, or if you think there are obvious questions that we need to answer. No, this is great. Um, thank you, Alka, Anka. And I think um, I see Jim has joined, which is great. Um, hey, folks. Yeah, apologies, I was running late today. Uh, no oh, problem. how uh, how far did you see into the presentation? So uh, I I joined in you know quite a few minutes back, so I caught most of it. Uh, oh, excellent! Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah. So Anka, just so you know, is, uh, is, uh, is at IBM Research and um, she's working actively with IBM Cloud. Um, and um, so this, so since they are also looking at um, feeding, you know, information about results from for various controls, okay. based assessment. And so I kind of pulled her in into this work group, right? So that's great. Uh, yeah. And uh, she's also uh, has dug deeply into OSCAL. And um, and so I think this work she has done is a very good example, I think, of how we can bring bring in OSCAL into the policy report uh, standard, right? That we are trying to standardize. Right. Yeah, and that that's a good question, Ananka. I did see your pull request as well, and thank you for you know providing that uh, the, the detailed report there. Um, I think the question we need to think through and uh, you know discuss is is the expectation that the policy report, uh, like a policy report would contain all of the OSCAL report details or what is the mapping and how will the two live together, right? So I'm not sure like today in your system, I, when you're producing this OSCAL report, I'm sure there's other systems consuming that directly and that will continue. So what is the expectation from the policy report so if we want to put some of this data in a Kubernetes CR, or maybe all of the data in the Kubernetes CR, how do we do that? And then how is it consumed and used? Yeah, this is this is a you know, it's a you know a very good question. And we um, since since Oscal again has uh, these many layers, and you know it's a it's a full blown framework, right? We've done baby steps. So the way that we adopted. Um, uh, Oscal was in phases. So um, we have created our own uh, schema validation. And initially we had uh, more items being um, optional than in the um, validation that you have uh, on the official uh, Oscal uh, project. So that, that's how we adopted. So one way of moving forward is having um, uh, mandatory only those uh, objects that are necessary, right, in the context, right, um, of of the working group, and and then as you move forward, additionally can be enabled as as mandatory and the uh, schema validator uh, updated. That that's how we worked out <laughs> into into the complexity of Oscar. Okay, um, so but which it, it, would it be that Oscar, the Oscar report and that schema that remains like a superset of what we want to put in the policy report or would the, do we want to see if all of this somehow fits even if it's a generic untyped data, um, it, it somehow we want the policy report to contain this information. And I'm not, yeah, not too clear about how or what would be the goals over there? Yeah, I think, uh, Anka, did, didn't you say that uh, if we want to kind of break up, you know, what OSCAL is providing into buckets, right? So there is the result, and then there is the remediation, and then you were talking about uh, evidence, right? Uh, um, so the, yeah, the result and the evidence, um, evidence reference, right? So if we go here into the uh, observation, right, mm -hmm. we have the evidence uh, uh, reference, right? And, uh, okay. and uh, um, reference at the policy and, and the status, right? Mm -hmm. um, then we can have a separate, there is a separate uh, sub item here on the remediation, um, what are the issues associated with that or the tickets or uh, uh, actions that are recommended and so on. Then there is another item related to um, risk. Um, and, uh, and I think the reason for leveraging right those is if this result is sent to a system that deals with enforcement or um, uh, right, automatic remediation, whether it's sent to a GRC system, sorry, mm -hmm. where risk is needed in order to fit into the processes that they have there to associate risk with that. So um, I think as Jim, you know, pointed out, I think it's, you know, fair, uh, very fair that 
depending on what is the goal, right, of, of this uh, policy result and, and the framework that is with, uh, used within, right, more or less of those items will be leveraged. Okay. Yeah, I think the way I read this uh, at a very high level is, looks like, you know, a lot of thought has gone into the definition of the OSCAL standard. And, oh, definitely, uh, yeah. Right, and uh, and it and comes obviously it is originated in NIST, and there are other parties contributing to it. Um, and it seems to me that uh, the policy report is essentially uh, representing that in the context of Kubernetes, right, for Kubernetes uh, CRs or Kubernetes resources, right, controls to protect a Kubernetes environment. So then OSCAL obviously can apply to all layers of the stack, right? Not just Kubernetes, but also VMs, et cetera. Yeah, that's, that's the beauty of that, that at the end of the day, we are able to put together a report where those different items can be aligned. Because if I'm looking for AC3, right? Or uh, the other one was AU3, I, I picked up those on purpose because these are controls that um, gather their um, aggregated result across the stack. Mm -hmm. So in order to meaningfully be able to aggregate that, we need those different layers in the stack to produce a result that, that you know, we compare and uh, are able to aggregate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, from my point of view, right, um, given, you know, the focus uh, that I'm uh, working on is uh, security and governance um, on the, I, would, I think, as everybody knows, that needs to be applied across the stack, right, for all the controls. And, and you want to be able to represent the results in the context of a standard that the customer is interested in, you know, whether it's NIST 853 or PCI or HIPAA or whatever, right? So I think this, um, this kind of brings that to the table. Um, so, so I really like this approach of bringing the OSCAL concepts into the policy report definition so that we can start uh, have a more consistent way of dealing with all layers of the stack. You know what I mean, Jim? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, it, so I think the question then becomes, so are we expecting, so for the Kubernetes layers, when we are reporting, and one option is, okay, we could say, well, let's just adopt the OSCAL definition and somehow see if we can, you know, if there's, uh, if we can take that definition and represent it as a Kubernetes CR, right? That would be one approach. Mm -hmm. um, the other approach would be to say, okay, we still want to provide some generic top level information like we have in the policy report, uh, which is something that we're inventing, but then somehow we can, you know, we can keep all of the OSCAL I don't know which layer it would cleanly map to. Like, so I see there's findings and there's a results group of findings and observations. So somewhere in there, if we map one of those layers to a policy result, um, then we could put all of the other data in, in just like the generic kind of an object, right? Which is untyped or unstructured in the policy report. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is tempting to kind of at least take a deeper look if uh, this work has been done, if it's used and if it's comprehensive, um, can we represent this OSCAL report or the, the entire structure in Kubernetes, right? For the Kubernetes layers. Um, so, uh, right, and I think uh, every time we are looking at uh, something like, you know, uh, standardization and so on, the first thought is, am I locking, you know, uh, 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 my, my, uh, myself into a, you know, rigid schema or structure and so on. And uh, I can share the experience that um, we um, had items uh, as part of that uh, that through the experience of, you know, in the field found out that, you know, things have to be handled in a different way or it makes sense, more efficient. And um, uh, the uh, OSCAL uh, team 
was open and flexible to take these feedbacks um, and and uh, make changes in order to be more efficient. So if we find out that the exercise that you may, uh, mentioned, Jim, let's take have a deeper look and you see that some things are uh, needed or missing or need to be done in a separate hall, although the schema is pretty flexible and generic, um, the team is is open to to listen to those feedbacks. So this this was a positive uh, experience for us. Okay, well that's good to know. Um, so are, are there systems you know which within like a, a you know for like your management tools? Are there examples of how these reports have been used? Like to whether it's for user interfaces like reports. Um, like, you know, more, I guess, user consumable reports, right, that are produced. So it'll be interesting to see that can this data, are there actual um, real world examples of this data being taken and translated uh, into something consumable by administrators and uh, people concerned with security of these systems? Because um, that would be a good data point to see that, yeah, then this makes sense that we also support it for Kubernetes. So Jaya, you have more experience with this working group. How much can we disclose from, you know, what we, how we use this for SEC and the plans and so on? I, um... Yeah, I think um, we are just starting to, you, you is on the call. He's in uh, my team uh, leading the, our GRC squad. And we are just starting to look at this, right? In terms of putting it into the product. So we haven't done that yet, but that said, you already have submitted an example of our config policy controller within Rackham, how it would use this standard to represent the results. So, and um, so what I'm saying is that we have mapped our, um, our existing controls um, to this standard, the existing policy CA standard, right? Policy report standard. And, but now that uh, Anka has done the work of bringing OSCAL in, um, we can do a, we have to kind of redo that mapping, I think, because I think uh, some of the fields that you have filled out uh, was not done as part of use work. But that said, our control today already has standards, control categories and controls in it. So we already have those pieces of information for our policies. So, so we should be able to fill those in um, based on the, example that you have here. Um, and I think I would like to proceed in this direction because eventually, like I said, if you take the Rackham product today, it already has, um, if you look at our dashboard, it already summarizes the controls in the context of their standards, right? Um, I think um, by making sure that when third party contribute to our open cluster management uh, policy collection repo, right? Where they start contributing policies and so on. If they also return results for the standard, uh, I think this will make sure that they are also including the, the um, control categories and controls and standards in terms of the results. So that when, when we roll it up in our, in our UI, we can have everything contributing to that overall picture, right? Because um, that's really what customers are looking for, right? When they operate a, a cloud, they're saying, you know, I have to operate it to a standard. And, and when I'm using governance, I want to know what am I actually governing? What are the gaps, right? Um, and so for that view, we do need this information. Um, otherwise it's going to be just islands, right? We'll, we'll just know policies, but we wouldn't know, you know, where, where do those fit? And uh, right, uh, I think this is that that's that's um, an important path that that is needed for uh, and where this can help to um, right uh, standardize and uh, organize the uh, across the stack. Another direction that uh, I have seen the uh, compliance. Um, right institutions that, uh, going towards is automatic generation of the documentation so we are talking about those you know hundreds of pages of 
uh, of the reports for the audit. And um, mm-hmm. that our, our initial thought, and, and they start, uh, started producing um, a particular coal fire, which is the first one that we've seen interested in OSCAL, uh, uh, templates for those documentation that can then be automatically uh, filled out from the, from the assessment results in, in OSCAL. So that's another direction. We, we are not yet there. But for us, that's that's the ultimate ultimate goal, right? To to help the automated generation of the audits. Yep, yep. That's a secondary. That's another goal. Yes. Right. So I think the the other question that comes to mind is, and I don't have an opinion on this, just kind of wondering out loud, is, you know, so part of the 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 driver or the motivation for the policy report was to have something that a cluster admin could see and that we have all of these different, uh, you know, the, a growing set of policy tools uh, for Kubernetes, right? Whether it's mm-hmm. uh, image governance or runtime policies or configuration scanning, things like that. So the question is like this report, it, it seems extremely comprehensive and well thought out. So it definitely seems worth a closer look. But how how would the if somebody is looking at this as a custom resource or like as a um, you know set of YAMLs in Kubernetes, will this be is it consumable as is, or do we need a simpler format that the admin can see and understand to say well, okay what's going on uh, in their particular system at a given time, right? Um, so if we are looking strictly at the language, uh, OSCAL uh, provides the same thing in YAML and XML, and you know, so we can get the YAML. Uh, so that's one aspect of your question. Uh, the other one, um, I think the um, uh, it depends, uh, and, and we've 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 got exactly into into the uh, core of of this um, uh, concern, right? Um, if we are looking at the co- compliance uh, operator, I think we have about 600 rules, right? So um, is it is it uh, the expectation there that an admin will be able to go through those 600 in, in one document? And of course, that, that's not, you know, feasible. So we are looking at organizing those um, uh, OSCAL files and objects within in a in a way that it is uh easily um uh handled um by uh, by the person that is looking to make changes to the profile or the policies and so on um and uh, and this is done by structuring the, all these you know uh results and the policies um in uh, in uh, github in a way that is that is easy to to navigate um the other approach that we have is via the is via the ui uh where i think it's very similar to what jaya has today in in rackham where we are able to uh search or we are able to display right through navigation what are the policies and then display the content that is relevant just for that particular. Uh, so you see here uh, an observation is kind of self-contained. It has the evidence, the scope and uh, the properties. So those would be the two means by which th- that can be uh, done. Um, if I can make the comparison, first one is more like the Linux approach. The second one is more like the Windows approach. So depending on the, you know, the, the type of users that we are dealing with, may, we may have people that work directly with the files or we can people that would work with the UI like uh, Jaya has today in the ACM. Yeah, I, I have to drop, but um, I, th- I think this is, I know Jim, uh, I'm sure you have to think, think through this. Um, and I'm ho- I know Robert couldn't join, um, so I'm hoping that he will listen to this recording. And um, I think we should uh, come back and uh, regroup, mm-hmm. right? And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah per- let's let's have another discussion on it, and maybe you know, like I'll I'll do some more research and read up on this too. This is super interesting, and I mean, I agree, it makes complete sense. I'm just you know, we need to kind of 
make sure that the some of the initial intent of the policy report are still um, met, right? Like in terms of having something simple for the user to see and understand what's going on. But yeah, at some point this data becomes overwhelming, right? Because if you have thousands mm -hmm. of rules, it's no longer going to be easy to read anyways. So yeah, those are some interesting trade-offs to discuss and decide how we want to proceed. Yeah, I think one interesting uh, um, uh, aspect for us would be, are the users uh, interested in um, uh, configuring those policies at the uh, CIS benchmark level? Is this what are they rather interested in having uh, blueprints the, the same way that the um, CIS benchmarks creates those or, or the OpenSCAP actually, those profiles. So I'm taking my 400 uh, mm -hmm. uh, list rules and I'm taking my 300, uh, you know, CIS benchmarks and I, I know that they are targeted to HIPAA or to NIST or to, to, to the right level and I mm. trust that. Or do I really have to go and edit within each rule of those, you know, 400 or uh, If you have any, any usability at this, at this uh, uh, point, I, I would be very interested because that would drive the user experience in a different way. Right. Yeah, makes sense. I think that's something we need to think through. And I, I, I don't know, like, again, will the mapping be done externally? Will it be done on a per rule basis? And which, you know, who represents that, right? But, but at a high level, what we, at least with the policy result, uh, the policy report, like just if you do run a CIS benchmark, the idea would be to at least be get to, to be able to see some summary status and under, you know, kind of be able to represent that in Kubernetes as a native object uh, of what the benchmark results were. Now, details, we have to decide, are those separate CRs? Are they part of the same report? Uh, or, you know, are those managed in external tools, right? And all of those are possible options. Uh, but the more flexible we can make this, I think the wider adoption and usage we'll see. And the schema allows for that, right? It's, right, uh... right. So is there any, I didn't see any, um, so Jaya, I know you, you have to drop, so please feel free. Maybe if, if Anka has some time, we can continue chatting. Um, for I have a minutes. couple of thoughts, I have 10 more minutes, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, please go ahead and Anka, we can catch up, okay? Thanks. Sure, yeah, okay. Bye. Thank you for joining today, thank you. Bye. Bye. So is there like in this, um, and I, you know, are there provisions for even providing things like summary counts, et cetera? Because um, that was one of the things we wanted to do in the report is have some you know, ability to say how many total pass failed, or is that just something, I mean, obviously you can process that by scanning through the data, uh, but is that also available? That would be as part of the uh, properties. So it's okay. not it's not uh, um, uh, singled out as uh, as as such, um, and the reason for that is that this is part of a, a larger hierarchical structure. So you have those individual observations, then you group them and aggregate at the controls level, then you group them at uh, regulation level, then you group them at the profiles that, you know, may include multiple. So when I have my counts, right, it may be you, you given, given this hierarchy, uh -huh. um, it's very difficult to, to, to have a count because you right. will need to associate it with which level I am in, in, in that. that. Right. So for yes. me, counts are rather a byproduct that, uh, mm that uh, can be um, generated Computed, right. rather than have it as part of the schema, right? I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and, and then, so like, just going back to the hierarchy, you know, so there is the result group, the findings, the observation. So how, where does it, so if I'm running like a CIS benchmark and you had some example of this, mm -hmm. um, is the CIS benchmark map to the, like, so let's say I'm running CIS benchmarks for Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. Does that map to the top level result group? I have, you know, one result group for CIS benchmarks for Kubernetes, and then I have findings underneath for each rule, or how, what is the mapping? 
Uh, correct. So um, uh, we pick a regulation, right? So uh, in your case, uh, in our case, we had missed. You say, well, I'm looking for CIS benchmarks. This means that my findings here, mm -hmm. right, my my control, right? It is it is the CIS benchmark itself. So then that's what I'm declaring there. And the um, that's my twelve o'clock. Okay. <laughs> and um, the uh, the rule, the observations that are associated with them would be at the uh, would be mapped one by one. So if you are looking here, this item, so let's say that I'm looking for a CIS benchmark, I'm not looking for AC3. This means that that will be mapped to mapped one to one to an observation, right? Because uh, um, although I have seen in um, uh, in uh, OpenSCAP that it can be sometimes that a CIS benchmark is implemented by two rules, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so this is the finding, right, is at the regulation level. And then what I have on the left, these observations, right, are the individual results. So what, what the finding allows you to do is that level of, of, of mapping to say, well, what are the, my, uh, um, my uh, individual results out of which I, I create my, uh, in the, this case, the CIS benchmark. But I would say 99% of the cases, I will have here a CIS benchmark and I have one-to-one, -one, one observation associated with that. You change the finding to NIST, right? I have uh, these, you know, four properties, four rules uh, for CIS benchmark that are associated with that. So you, you can use it across any, any type of um, uh, regulation or benchmark that you, that you need. Okay, so then what does the result group map to if, um, is that? Okay, uh, the result group, it is part of the, um, uh, an object above uh, those, those observations and findings, which is called assessment result. So as part of the assessment result, peers to result group would be um, the uh, 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 SSP, which would be the inventory on top of which I apply uh, my um, objectives. So let's say uh, it, it, give you, it gives you flexibility as an auditor to uh, fine tune your audit, right? So if I'm, if I'm doing OpenSCAP and I'm doing all the compliance operator and I put it in this format, right? It is all or nothing. What the other levels um, peers to result group allows me to do is to say, uh, I'm looking only at this set of inventory. I'm looking only at this uh, particular clusters or this particular VMs and my SSP will, will give only those items. So then when I go here into observations, I will not have 100% of my inventory. I will have a subset of that. Um, mm -hmm. Another, sorry? Okay. No, I, I'm just, yeah, I see. So, so this seems like this report then is generated based on what you're trying to, what information you're trying to gather, right? So if I say, okay, I want to look at maybe um, some subset of my clusters or maybe some subset of nodes in a cluster, then the report will, the result group will be for that particular did I understand that correctly? It's for that inventory that I will create the result group. And then the finding will map to each one of the benchmarks or each one of the regulations that I want to apply. And then within those, I will have multiple rules. Um, yeah, so let me see if I have, um, this is the right. <clears throat> No, uh, I try to find because I think the uh, what I try to say is that the more layers you add to this mm -hmm. onion, <laughs> the more functionality you get out of the OSCAL framework. So right now we looked only at the core results, right? right. If you add to that the SSP, you get flexibility on handling the, the scope. Uh, another aspect that you have here, it's called um, assessment methods 
and it allows you to describe, let's say that I have uh, 10 tools to do assessments, right? I have compliance operator, I have Cavionics, I have Prisma, I have right, different tools. So mm -hmm. it can be that an auditor says, you know what, I, I want that tool, the results from that tool. So it allows you to describe how the, uh, what are the methods mm. that are connected, what are. So um, again, OSCAL is very rich, right? Yeah. Another, another aspect, it's called uh, a peer to result group is called uh, objectives. So the objectives is derived from the object of profile. So where you say, I'm not interested in full NIST 853, I'm interested only in the um, uh, access control part, or I'm an auditor that I'm only familiar with the network uh, aspect. So I want only the um, boundaries uh, related controls, right? So the, the more levels you, you add here, right, the, the, the richer starts to be the, the way that you can tune your result. Right now is what we have it's right all, all or nothing or we have other means by which we trim that okay all right yeah this will be interesting to think through and discuss and see how we want to like because if we have certain policy frameworks running in a kubernetes cluster how should they store their information and then seems like maybe we do need a little bit of a, um something which can allow queries to pull this together and, and pass back a particular report in Kubernetes, right? Or if you yeah, want to Yeah, the reason why I didn't add all these other layers is because they are dependencies, as you said, right. systems, right? So this means now I have, I need a discovery system mm. that provides right. inventory in the OSCAL SSP format. So I'm able now to build this into, into this report. So uh, I, I removed on purpose everything so that the people are not okay. confused that we need all these other tools. But now if we have that discovery and we are able to produce uh, OSCAL in other aspects of Kubernetes, like inventory as code in the OSCAL SSP format and so, then we, we are able to put those together and, and leverage them here as, as, as uh, an uh, okay. item. All right. Yeah, let, let, I'll, I'll do some research and thank you for this again. And um, I know we're coming up on the hour and we both have other meetings coming up. So we'll maybe continue the conversation offline and we can meet again next time. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward for the, 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 the people. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, who is listening to that. Yeah. And uh, please join next time to, to provide the feedback on, on, uh, on this uh, proposal of uh, uh, policy result standardization. Yeah, looking forward. All right. Thanks, Anka. Take Thank care. Thank you for doing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.